Aloha all. This is my 38th podcast. I am doing this one on fear. I know I did one on fear a while ago, but this one is called What is Under the Fear? Because I'm sharing my own experiences. I guess we'll just keep checking in week to week with this pandemic happening around the world. There is some beautiful things happening and some terrifying things, and we're all mixed with so many emotions and it's so important. I mean, I'm grateful I've been a counselor. I'm grateful I've been in the healing arts and the health and wellness my entire life as well as being a meditator because it's now benefiting. I kind of see like the point of my whole existence right now for the skills I know to keep myself in balance and um, and more so when I'm not in balance to be okay with that. I've talked to so many people. I'm getting pretty busy with my um, FaceTime and Zoom and counseling calls and checking in with friends and family, as I'm certain all of you are. And the common theme I'm hearing with everyone is is, um, it really is day to day. It's like when you wake up each morning what is it checking in to see how you're feeling? And uh, there's a couple different practices you can do. You could either use your kind of meditative practice where you you notice uh, where, like I said last week, where it, where it is in the body, where the sensation is in the body, and maybe uh, name it, okay, fear or sadness or frustration or despair or... Uh, happiness or excitement or the sun's out today or something and using that could uh, help but um, really being kind to yourself now many of us have learned to be kind to others and we do that either we instinctively have had these beautiful hearts and compassion and we're used to being kind to others I hope if you're afraid or things are happening that you're not going to lash out on other people. If you're uh, kind of in your quarantine together in small quarters, close quarters, or when you go out to the store or whatever it is, just try to be kind. Know everybody has hit their level of fear. Um, and But to bring that kindness back to yourself is most important all the time to just keep checking in where it's that inner child work. So I want to share an experience I had. So I was doing very, very good and stable and researching and, you know, doing my, um, where I was pacing it, where sometimes I can't read about politics, sometimes I can, sometimes I could read about the virus as soon as I wake up, sometimes I waited till, you know, after I meditated and did my French and all those things and worked out and then and sometimes I wouldn't read it at all for a day or two, and all of that. And so I was maintaining my balance. And then it hit me uh, last week where it was like one thing after another. I was aware enough to know that I was not in um, a stable mind. I was not in a, um, I had no sense of ground to me. And I knew that because Anything that anyone said to me was, I saw it through a filter of it's personal. And it was what they're saying to me is somehow I wasn't good enough or somehow I'm not going to be a part of their life or they're leaving or it's abandonment or it's something is so final. And it wasn't at all what was happening. I was just between the collective um, fears and disturbances out there which I'm always tuned into and my own it was way too much and I tried to do all of my tools every day and then I really collapsed on this particular day and I just cried a lot I just really cried a lot but what I saw was a few days before that there was this sense of me wanting to run away because something was said to me that I took personal and it really hurt my feelings and it was this, I actually visualized myself opening up my back door and running in my backyard, just running away because the pain was so great and unfortunately that feeling didn't leave me 
and how it was showing up in my body was it literally was this numb feeling, like I actually couldn't feel any part of my body except around my chest and my heart. It was just tight, like a band, like it was constricted. And I could feel slight vibration uh, in certain areas, but it was more tight, it was more solidified. And, and then I noticed that I was having shortness of breath and trouble breathing, and, and I actually was starting to leave my body. And this was something that happened. I had a memory of this happening when I was in my early 20s, and I was dealing with some sexual abuse issues that were coming up. And at that point, I was going to school, I was going to uh, University of Maui, and, and I was working full time, I was doing all of this. But I found as that process was coming up, and I was actually giving it a lot of attention, and I was seeing a counselor and various things, that I noticed that my spirit would want to leave my body a lot. And I never knew that's what I was doing throughout my life whenever I would be in a really uh, strong state of fear. I didn't identify it as my spirit trying to leave my body. Now, mind you, if the spirit left the body totally, then we no longer breathe. Um, and But I have known of some people that have been so traumatized that their spirit like hangs out just hovering above their body, kind of on that little thread, that cord, cord of life. And anyway, so in those days when I would feel that I'd start to get lightheaded and dizzy and my mind would get foggy, I'd actually go to the ocean, the Baldwin Beach, and I'd run on the ocean. And it was that, I was big into running in my 20s and my late teens. It was like my thing, even in Venice Beach, I ran on the ocean all the time because I needed that compression, that like pounding to keep, it's almost like through F this, I'm gonna keep my spirit in my body. I didn't want it to take off again, like I wanted it to stay. And, and it was painful to stay, of course, because it's easier to not feel things. But I noticed uh, for myself, and this has happened since with people I've counseled that are dealing with trauma, uh, that there's often bruises on their legs and their lower body or their hips and things. And what's happening is, is they're really not present in their body. So they actually run into things and then they look down and they're like, wait, how did I get that bruise? Well, because they weren't very conscious. And that's one of the symptoms of not being very present in your body, uh, regardless if you believe it's the spirit leaving or not. But but I had a flash in this one moment as I was sitting on my couch with such despair and grief of that moment when I was last running in my 20s. And then I flashed for every moment from the age of like three of any time there was a trauma in my life or despair um, and the grief would be overwhelming and I would just want to leave because I couldn't handle it. When my brother was killed, my oldest brother was killed, and buried on my 16th birthday, and that was a, a very pivotal point in my life, but I don't remember a year of my life, and uh, I just remember that same uh, numb feeling, like not a lot of memory of what's happening around me, and that time in my life was lost. So, but many people, when they're in fear or trauma, they stay in that place where they're not really present. And you could sometimes see it in their eyes where there's like the pupils are dilated and it's almost like a, a shock that's actually happening. So I, I want to share with you how I navigated through that. So I allowed this little brief snippets of my life that happened very fast. My mind saw this very fast, like every traumatic moment I ever remembered that was my greatest pains up to this point. And then here I am on my couch seeing that I want to run away again. And this kind of was leading up to it for days before everything, everything was too much to handle. And, um, and then I took my cleansing breath, as I'm always telling everyone to do, and it really is my instant tool. And just with that sigh, that relieving that pressure on my heart, I remembered 
to say my inner words that it's going to be okay and I'm not leaving you no matter what. And me saying that to myself, my commitment to myself that no matter what happens in the world right now, I, not my parents, not my partner, not my friends, not my family, not my counselors, nobody, it's me. I am not going to leave me and I'm going to stay here. And it was interesting to remember that that was a pattern of mine that I was often so destabilized and felt emotionally insecure and so much anxiety when I was younger because I didn't have that conscious commitment to stay. And I was trying to leave my body any chance I could get because the pain was too great. Now, some people aren't aware that their spirit is actually trying to leave, so they numb themselves with addictions, with food, with alcohol, with sex, with work, with, you know, online surfing with everything. Uh, and then that helps them numb the pain. But I didn't use substances. I stopped all of that pretty much by my early, mid-20s. And then I just had to deal with what I had in front of me. And I'm glad that I've done that. So that tenderness, so if you could find... I've said this in several podcasts, but I'm going to keep saying it. What is that phrase that makes you feel safe? Uh, my friend said, I'm not going to leave you. I mean, that was his phrase. Mine is, I'm here. It's similar, that no matter what, I'm here. I'm never going to leave, like to the end. And that can help. Now, I have an exercise for you, and I'm grateful that my mind is so fluid and creative and keeps coming up with adapting times and new exercises to offer to you as my listeners and to um, friends and, and clients. So here is an exercise I want you to journal that I want you to write a letter to yourself right now your future self is writing you the letter now. So place yourself in the future. I don't know if you want it to be five years from now, ten years from now, whatever. And visualize yourself. Take a few cleansing breaths. Really get grounded. Don't have any distractions. And even if it's just for ten minutes or however long you want, write a letter to yourself like mine would be Dear Samana and start writing. And I want you in this letter from your future self to write your insights about how courageous you were or what specific skills that you adapted to endure and to maintain some form of equilibrium during these times that you got through it, that there was hope that you did get through it, uh, regardless if you get the virus and, and uh, recuperate, or regardless if it doesn't hit you, or however that is, or if you build an immunity to it. But write that letter. Your future self is writing to yourself right now. And I know it sounds odd, because you may think that here I'm not feeling so secure, and I don't really know what to say, but any time I have done letters like this in other circumstances, if you put your mindset in there, you will have some wisdom and you could actually time travel. Time is, a, is an illusion of the mind. So you could actually place yourself in that. And I'd really love anyone to share their um, results, their, how it helped them, what they discovered, what they found. Because we need to identify these qualities that we are tapping into. And again, you know, we may pray for certain things like security and or which that's an illusion. I just I don't want to like destabilize you more. But what is security really? And and um, we just have to figure out things we could do today. Another daily journaling, if you tend to wake up in a panic mode these days or on days that it is rough, if you have your journal by your bed, you get up, you pee, brush your teeth, whatever you need, get your coffee, and then put your timer on for 10 minutes, and you just write, who are you right now? What are you feeling right now? 
You could write, what tools do I have today? Just today, in this moment, what do you notice? Uh, is it the tool of curiosity? Is it the tool of hope? Is it the tool of, I have a little more physical energy, I'm going to, I don't know, clean out my closet? Is it, what is it? What are your tools today? Um, and then you could write, how can I implement these to benefit myself? And how could I implement these tools to benefit others? And those could be one topic for 10 minutes, or those could be, if you write fast, all done in 10 minutes, or three separate days, however you want to do that, or throughout the day. I mean, there are times I've journaled a couple times throughout the day because it is one of my stabilizing self-care tools. I've been meditating three, four times a day. The plus is, and I'm hearing this from many people, is that we actually have so much time right now to... Um, to do a home retreat, like there's no excuse to not care for yourself right now. So we're doing the best we can do for our home retreats. And I'm out at the park often, and I'm going for walks either by myself or with someone at a distance. And I'm seeing people, I'm seeing all these families together. I love that. So here we are, as people are noticing, the planet is healing. Nature is healing. I'm reading these things about goats taking over this little village in Europe and, you know, there's more dolphins coming out and whales where they normally don't see them. And, you know, it's like the humans are taking a rest so that nature could get strong again. And it's beautiful. And I love that. So there are pluses and we have to do pluses. Another wonderful reboot every morning is, again, pee, brush your teeth, have your tea or coffee, and then just three things you're grateful for, because that gratitude reboots the brain. And even if you have to force it, I'm grateful I have another day to live. I'm grateful I have food today. I'm grateful I could see these beautiful trees from my window. I was grateful yesterday that I was out in the sun, soaking it up like a solar panel. So excited. I knew we were going to have rain for about a week. Again, I even enjoy the rain. It's just so gentle, and, and it's like an encouragement from the universe for us to go inside and be soft with ourselves. So all of these little tools. So part of these feelings that are coming up that I've heard from a few people I've talked to and first off, one of my greatest teachers of my life, George Kinder, who is my Vipassana teacher, it's his birthday today, thank you, George, for all of your teachings. I don't know if you listen to my podcast, but boy, do I love you, and so much gratitude for your life today, and, and I do a weekly meditation with him and a lot of my sangha and his beautiful wife, Kathy, and Hillary and Tripp and all of them, and I just love seeing them at a distance, and just hearing people sharing their concerns, their fears, this panic where sometimes it gets so bad there that you're questioning your sanity, you're questioning, wait, am I in a dream? Which part is the dream when I'm sleeping or when I wake up? Wait, it's, it is like PTSD where you're like, this, this is still happening. And it's that obsession to look at the phone to see, okay, what's the count now? But then again, keep breathing through that. So a lot of what I'm hearing and my own feeling is this feeling of failure. So there's this deep sense of failure that people are, that are feeling. And it's in reference to who we've been. And who we've been is before March, okay? So this is changing by the day. So regardless if you're feeling like a failure as a provider or as a leader or a boss or a partner or a parent or a child, a friend, a grandparent, all of this has collapsed, our belief, our knowingness of who we were and what our skills were and how we adapted to our life, however old you are, you have adapted certain skills to a way of living that may have changed in different aspects, but overall was the same. It is not the same every day right now. So using our spiritual tools, 
I'm going to remind you that depression is from being too much in the past of what was, and anxiety is being too much in the future. So if you're having lots of anxiety, do not plan for the future because you could only plan in this moment. You take a breath, you assess what's happening, you assess what needs to happen most, and go forward with that. So, looking at yourself and asking, who am I right now? And what am I able to do? And gratitude for the people around you that are filling in the spots where you're not so strong. And there are some days I'm so strong, I want to broadcast to the planet and give be everyone's anchor, give everyone that strength. And when I've had clients or friends or family call and they need support, if I'm destabilized, I won't answer the phone. I'll just text them when I can because I'm not going to push it. And I would say to all of you, don't push it, don't pretend. And for those of you that do are blessed still having your jobs and you're doing everything remotely and online, if you are stuck on a computer all day, please make a commitment to yourself. There is a, an app when I uh, spent time in Plum Village with my daughter years ago with uh, Thich Nhat Hanh. And there is an app you could download called the Mindfulness Bell and you could program it on your computer to go off, like if you want it every 15 minutes or once an hour. And I used to spend a lot of time on my computer when I was like writing schedules or writing or different things. And it would be ideal now to download something like that where you could um, program what chime you want or if you want it to be a, a beautiful bell like this. That sort of thing. Something beautiful. But as soon as you hear that bell, you stop whatever you're in the middle of, mid-sentence, mid-talk, and you take a breath, a cleansing breath, and just feel your body. Feel what it's like to sit on the chair, to stand, look out the window if you can. Every hour on the hour, every 30 minutes, every 15 minutes, every 20 minutes. But do that for yourself. We need to do these tools right now. So to keep sane, I'm telling people, reminding them to keep a routine. It doesn't matter, like, what's the point of getting up? I have nothing to do, and it's the same thing. Keep your, make sure you're asleep. Don't, like, stay up all night streaming programs because... If that's not what you normally do, get rest. You still need seven, eight, nine hours of sleep a night. And the more stressed you are and the more st mental stress you have, the more sleep you actually need. So get enough rest. Make sure you shower every day. Put on real clothes. Do some form of exercise. There's so many online. I have done so many I do two, three a day. Like, I am going to be so buff by the time this is done. And I work out at the gym five days a week. But it's like, I don't have anything to do. I keep my ball in the living room, and I just keep doing crunches. Or I'll do squats, or I'm doing something, burpees, or planks, or my weights. I'm just doing something all the time, and it helps. So... Now, nature is a big part, as I said. If you could go outside in your yard or go for a walk, if you're still allowed to do that wherever you're at. If you have any elderly relatives or neighbors or something, you can offer to go for a distance walk with them around the neighborhood or through a park or sit on a porch with them. This is very important because they may be too afraid to leave their house. But if you say, okay, let's do this like early in the morning before kids and stuff are up, or let's do it later in the, like before sunset, and just to make sure that it's safe for them. It's safer being outside than it is confined inside, and nature's going to help balance you. We need the birds. We need the nature all around us, the sounds, the wind, all of that. Um, and I was recommending to a friend of mine, like those of you that can't see your grandkids right now, again, do a FaceTime, do a Skype, do a Zoom call. 
And you could do drawing games where regardless of whatever their age is, you let them take turns where someone says, okay, we're going to draw a kitty, and then you all draw a kitty, and then you go around and comment on each person's picture, or you could vote on whose is the best. If you don't want to do that, then just comment on everybody gives praise to the picture. And that's a fun thing to do. Or the grandparents, you could be reading to your grandkids. If they're little, you know, give your, your children a break and just let them go do something else in the other room of the house and you could sit and read them a story and comment and get their feedback and things. So there are so many things that we can do, so remember that. Now, there's a million meetups out there. There's a million virtual classes out there. I personally do yoga every week. I do a woman's group. I'm doing this meditation. Uh, I'm doing a full moon dance ritual thing, so that's really great coming up next week. And uh, David Garrison and myself were offering a meetup. So if you are on Facebook, you could friend either David Garrison or myself, Samana Benedetti, and uh, or I'm on the meetup in Austin, which I am going to cancel that soon. I do have 75 members, but I've already written them, so give me your information. Anyways, we're charging $5 for our April 9th. Dating and relating in these times, and we're going to put you in chat rooms together, and we're going to kind of teach you some skills. We're going to teach you some reflective listening skills because now is the time more than ever that we need to be present and conscious and intentional in our communication. Every moment matters. And we're also going to show you about uh, inquisitive um, things, how to, how to like keep engage a conversation. Like if you're dating right now online, you need to have skills how to really be interested in someone and show that interest without your hand touching them. And you got to find other, other ways. We're adapting other skills. So we're doing that. And that, like I said, is $5. If you can't afford the $5, let us know. I mean, we just want to offer things. We're just trying to get the Zoom things paid for and not be at a loss and our meetup fees and all that stuff. So that is going to be from 6 to 7.30 Central Time on April 9th. That's a week from today on Thursday. So we'd love to have you. It's going to be fun. I, we've already had um, quite a few signups, uh, men and women, all different ages. I don't care if you're married, if you're single, if you're uh, a couple together forever, a new couple, if you're distancing together, distancing alone, we will come up with a lot of fun, edgy things. So, back to looking at this fear. So on, in spiritual terms, when we look at fear, fear is basically the mind is about to go into a place that it doesn't know. And the truth is, we, there is no security. In reality, like we could say, yes, I'm married. Yes, I live in this house. Yes, I have this job. And then something like this comes along and proves to us. So the beautiful thing, the spiritual, the higher implication of this whole tragedy is that we are all closer to the authentic truth that nothing is permanent, that nothing is secure, nothing is stable. And it makes us more fragile it makes us more vulnerable. It makes us more um, raw. It makes us less arrogant, less separate. Uh, it softens us because we have that deeper knowing that we need others. It softens us because we're not ready to die and we want to live longer. And fear, underneath the fear, ultimately is the fear of death. And we're actually being faced with that. And it's not just elderly people with predisposed conditions. It's infants and children and 20-year-olds and 30-year-olds and 40-year-olds. And it goes on and on. So I want you to take this seriously with your distancing and with your hygiene and with everything. And as much as, you know, we're Italian, I mean, I haven't hugged my dad in a while now, he still comes over a couple times a week, but it's at a distance, and that's sad, but it's what we have to do right now for his health, for my health, for all of that. So 
we are doing the best we can. But looking at that fear of death, um, what I've always said about death when I lost my brother, it was a pivotal point in my life where I went from being quite superficial and partying a lot and caring about money and prestige and all of that. I was so glad I was 16 when this happened, so it happened at a young age, to where I actually really needed to go deeper to, I couldn't accept that this is all life was, like this superficial what you see. So death, I will always say death is a great prioritizer. It really makes you see what matters to you. And in Buddhist terms, I've said this before too, that the Buddhists say to contemplate death daily and you will stay in right action. Meaning, if we were to say, okay, I have a year left with my parents, or I have three months left to live, or I may never see my best friend again, or any of those things. But think in those terms, not in a sad, defeated way, but in a very awake, real way that you can see we don't know what's happening anymore. We don't know when it's our time. And many, many people are going to pass over. Now, I'm not afraid of death. I, for some reason, have never been afraid of death. I hope that I have a purpose and can help many more people for a lot longer. I believe my skills are really kicking in more than ever right now because I'm good in tragedy. I'm good in, um, in uh, times of need, and I do enough self-care every day that when I'm not strong, I will pull away. So, But I really am looking at what can I do to be most have most purpose? Who can I help the most right now? That's been my prayer like throughout the day to bring to me those that need help the most. And as I said, I'm doing my counselings virtually online um, and my rates were 100 or two sessions for 150 and it's now sliding scale. Just let me know what you can afford and I'd rather a consistent check-in times with you and give you some tools and get you on a routine and talk about nutrition. And as for supplements, I had a couple of clients of mine, a student of mine, write me a week ago, do I still sell pure encapsulation? Yes, I do. I've been a distributor over 15 years. They're a pharmaceutical grade. You could look online, pure encapsulation, and they still are manufacturing and shipping out daily. They're pretty good. They're a little backed up, but not too much. And I just got a big order a week ago. And any of you that want to contact me and place an order through me, you'll give me your credit card. I will place the order. But I will give you a little consultation. Now, know that I don't have any like doctor degree or any of that, but I have been a nutritionist and I have dealt with these supplements. Like I said, over 15 years, I specialize in cleanse and detox and anxiety disorders and hormone imbalancing and mental fatigue and, you know, foggy brain and people with diabetes and people with like sciatic pain and inflammation and whatever it is you have going on, blood sugar, energy, I can, I, there's so many supplements they have and they have these wonderful packets where you could get, like I'm actually doing the, the pure pack 30 day detox, which I would give to uh, clients when they're doing my 30 day cleanse, but I'm not necessarily doing the cleanse. I eat pretty healthy, but I love that it's these little foil packs and everything's in there, my omegas and all of my uh, vitamins and minerals and antioxidants. It's all in there except my probiotic. So that's an easy way to keep everything nice and balanced. So contact me, 808-283-7587 or Samana, S-A-M-A-N-A, at spaluna.com. My website is www.spaluna, S-P-A-L-U-N-A dot com. And blessings to all of my Hawaii listeners. And I know they closed the airports down yesterday. And I know you have lots of great soil to grow some foods and things. And may we all get through this and be stronger on the other side. So keep your connections. Plan 
like schedule old friends you haven't contacted for a while or family members, schedule Skype meetings and phone calls and put it in your calendar, wake up and write it down and just remember that fear is paralyzing and what's under the fear, keep looking what's under the fear and really uh, being curious about it and nothing makes sense right now and but what is this moment we always have that what is this moment and track your body notice your breathing <sighs> do that breath that cleansing breath and blessings to all of you let me know if there's anything I can do to help and I would love to see all of you online for our April 9th meetup dating and relating in these challenging times. Learn some social skills. Let's do what we can do. And blessings to all of you. Aloha.